Hello again. In our last couple lectures, we've been talking about PGP, which is a particular system uh, built by Phil Zimmerman for email encryption, a very nicely engineered system. Today, let's talk about how uh, PGP manages keys. Right, so in PGP, there are actually four different kinds of keys which are used. The session keys, which when you, when you ask for an email to be encrypted, a new session key is generated and used for symmetric encryption. Uh, and then there's public and private key pairs, and those are persistent and they hang around for a while. And then there's something else called passphrase-based keys, which are used for storing your private key. So let's see where they come from. Right, so session keys, remember, used for uh, symmetric encryption are just randomly generated bit strings of the appropriate length. So depending upon the encryption algorithm, maybe that's 128 bits or 160 bits or or, or some other length, right? Where do they come from? Well, they should be uh, high entropy in the sense that they should be random appearing and not be guessable by an attacker. And so uh, PGP just came up with a particular way of generating high entropy strings. In particular, you take the previous session key and you generate a new uh, key to encrypt that with using um, uh, key stroke timing and movements of the mouse. Uh, this is called collecting entropy in one of these systems. Uh, and that's random enough. And so you, you encrypt that new stuff with the old key and that gives you a new key. Um, this is a pretty simple scheme, but it, it uh, would be very, very hard for an attacker to guess the new key. Okay, public and private key pairs uh, say RSA keys, um, these require a lot more work because they can't be randomly generated bit strings. In particular, RSA requires that the keys uh, involve large primes. And so what we have to do is generate two large primes in a way which is entirely unguessable to the attacker. And the way that's done is just using a bit of number theory. What, what you do is you generate a very large number of the appropriate size. Say you need a key of uh, 2,000 bits. Uh, then you generate a number of that size, and then you test it for primality. Well, it's not likely to be prime, so you throw it away and generate another one, and you keep doing that until you get a prime. Well, that's an expensive process, but it, it terminates because there are certain results from number theory that says primes appear in a certain range uh, with a certain frequency, and so probabilistically you'll get a prime eventually. But this may take a while, but that's okay because you don't do this very often. And so you generate a public key and a private key, and you use those uh, for some days or months or even years. The last kind of key are these passphrase encrypted keys. And what happens there is uh, the entire uh, security of the system depends upon your private key being kept private. And so you don't want to just store it on your disk because then an attacker who can who can subvert the protections on your disk and get your key, and then all bets are off and they can read your email. Um, so what you do is you store your private keys in an encrypted form. Well, where do, where do you get the key to, to encrypt them with? Well, that's the passphrase generated part. So what happens is whenever the system has to access, has to store or access your private key, it asks you to type in a passphrase, think a password, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a word, it can be a, a phrase. Uh, that passphrase is then uh, hashed using say SHA-1 or something else. That generates a, a fixed length bit string, and then that's used as the encryption or decryption for the private key. And so whenever you have to access the private key, you go through this process, then PGP will ask you to type in your passphrase. Okay, so what have we said? Well, PGP uses these four different kinds of keys, uh, session keys, public and private keys, and these passphrase-based uh, keys to protect the private keys. The public and private keys are expensive to generate, but that's not a, an operation which you have to perform very often. The session keys are easy to generate, it's just generating a random string, and PGP uses this algorithm to do it in such a way that it's probably not easily guessable. Uh, and since the security of the system depends upon your private keys being kept private, it has this additional mechanism, this additional security layer, 
whereby your private key is encrypted using one of these passphrase generated keys and it's stored encrypted, uh, protecting it from an attacker who might subvert your, your uh, file security. Thanks much.